Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. We look at shells, death slicers, peasants, fossils, minions, meat sacks. I'm useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today we go to Ukraine and uh, take a look at this 30-year uh, anniversary of the uh, nuclear disaster in Chernobyl. And uh, I've always thought it was ironic that uh, something that happened on uh, uh, Soviet soil uh, becomes a problem that the Ukrainians have now inherited. So it's a certain irony there. But uh, the other thing about this is that, uh, of course, uh, the accident Chernobyl's ongoing uh, problem 30 years later. Uh, n another story just came out recently about uh, radiated milk coming out of Belarus, uh, one of their neighbors, uh, still going on 30 years later. And there's an 18-mile uh, radius uh, no-go zone, although there are, uh, it's a lot of wildlife that have retaken the area, and people are still living in that in that exclusion zone even though at the time of course millions were uh, displaced and there's speculation of anywhere from hundreds to millions of people who have died as a result of that accident uh, there's really no way to document it and uh, of course that serves the people who try to cover up these stories and uh, at the time 10 tons of uranium out of 200 uh, tons of uranium uh, blew into the sky and uh, covered 40 percent of Europe uh, with uh, certain levels of radiation and uh, the other thing about the Chernobyl that's uh, notable and certainly in comparison to Fukushima too is the fact that Chernobyl has been uh, sealed in a, a cement sarcophagus and uh, here it is uh, four or five years later in Fukushima Japan and uh, this uh, plant is still exposed to the air and with three meltdowns and uh, there's been talk of a sarcophagus at, at some point, but uh, uh, they're going to try everything else in, in, in the meantime. But a uh, very notice, noticeable difference. So the effects of Fukushima are going to be exponential uh, compared to that at Chernobyl, even though the, the nature of the events is, is somewhat different. But uh, one thing I want to focus in on here in my video is, is a couple statements. Uh, one that was made by a Ukrainian energy uh, policy expert uh, just recently, and then some uh, statements that have been made previously in the past uh, by other uh, nuclear experts regarding uh, Fukushima and I was just struck by uh, how similar they are in the theme that uh, the top technology to address these uh, uh, nuclear issues doesn't exist and won't exist for a long time and that's a very scary proposition and at the heart of uh, why Chernobyl and Fukushima will continue to be a problem for humanity for years to come so let's go let's go to this recent uh, uh, statement by Ukrainian energy policy expert and she said that quote we don't have the technology to fix the problem we don't have the process to develop the technology to fix the problem and we don't have the money to support the process to develop the technology to fix the problem the solution is to seal it for now we will have smart children and smart grandchildren who in a hundred years or so or so will figure out what to do unquote uh, so pretty uh, pretty depressing quote and uh, pretty much nails it uh, they don't have the technology n now they don't have the knowledge or processes to create the technology and uh, even if they did they would never have the money to do it uh, Japan on the other hand has the money to do it even though they're completely broke uh, they will find the money to do it and uh, but it could take a long time up to 200 years according to uh, the chief at Fukushima he he also admitted that the technology needed to decommission three melted down reactors doesn't exist and he has no idea how it will be developed and, uh, and that echoes another statement from a top nuclear uh, expert uh, that in testimony to United States Congress 2012 he said there will need to be new technologies and new methodologies created to be able to clean the site up and some of these technologies don't exist yet so there's a long way to go with that there's a long long way to go unquote so uh, so that's my theme here in this video uh, looking back at uh, the effects of Chernobyl and now the the effects of Fukushima is that uh, these uh, technologies do not exist uh, to uh, to address these problems and uh, uh, no one knows how they will be created and uh, so no one knows how far in the future if, uh, if at all these technologies could be developed uh, the bottom line in, in recent stories is that Chernobyl will be a threat 
for 3,000 more years. Uh, it will still be a danger in the year 4,986. And uh, in order to put that in perspective, in this article they pointed out that that would be the equivalent of having this radiation be a problem from the time of the creation of Rome uh, until modern times now. And uh, so let me shift the theme to this video uh, one more time and, and point out the uh, amazing, incredible arrogance of uh, humanity and uh, the people in charge and, and the greed, the confluence of greed and fraud and science that went into the creation of the nuclear industry across the globe. And to, to be so, uh, so lack so, to uh, completely lack humility and to be so arrogant to think that, uh, that this could be contained and then uh, and, and going ahead with it in full knowledge that uh, the possibilities of containing something that did happen uh, would have technologies that have never been invented and won't be for hundreds of years. Just uh, staggering to think of uh, human arrogance in, in a situation like this uh, that, that they could actually uh, burden generations for thousands of years uh, with what they thought was a good idea at the time. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?